Hello, this is Stefan Mückstein from Energy Lab. Uh, last week we had an HSC video from ISRA um, about the HSC consideration on construction sites. And today we are actually on one of the construction sites and look at the actual HSE um, rules and regulations that we implemented. I'm just now uh, joined by Josefa. Um, Josefa, can you just briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, hello, this is Josefa Khalid and uh, I'm a HSC officer at Project right now. And uh, I'm the one who is handling a safety perspectives over here. So, uh, great. Um, Josefa, just while we're standing here, can you outline sort of some of the HSE protection that we're doing in general and, and maybe specific uh, to COVID? I mean, for example, the gloves. Uh. So basically here, we're the main hazard which we, which we will face over here in this site, it will be work at height. So, so what are the main protections which we, we need to focus are the mandatory PPEs. Those are you're wearing your safety helmet, safety helmet, safety vest, your safety gloves and safety shoes. And uh, by safety helmet, you will always have to wear the safety uh, chin strap with that because uh, on height there is no hazard to something to fall from height but there is always a slip trip and fall hazard so in that case your safety helmet will save you from falling down and uh, your helmet will not fall off first so it will protect your head at that time and right now like uh, in this pandemic situation uh, for the covid 19 we have some additional precautions also we are which, uh, which we are taking here like we are using hand sanitizer over here so everyone whoever is going up he has to sanitize his hands first and when he comes back he has to sanitize his hands back also going up and uh, coming back he has to sanitize his, uh, his hands further precautions which we are taking are the, uh, the safety mask uh, this is uh, like uh, surgical mask to protect the uh, people from viruses and one more thing which is uh, uh, we are like strictly following here that no one is sharing their water bottles with uh, anyone else so each labor has his own water bottle with his own uh, name on it so nobody should share and nobody should be close to anyone and sharing any kind of uh, connection with each other so in this way we are uh, taking precautions for the COVID-19 situation also Josefa, can you tell me something about the, the safety harness that you're wearing, about the scaffolding, uh, about the certification, and maybe also about the signage a little bit? Okay, so this uh, this is actually the rescue harness which I am wearing because I'm also a rescuer, uh, uh, emergency rescuer from uh, uh, fall from height. So this is the one which uh, which is used to, uh, to rescue someone from fall from height. So there is another harness which we are using here on site. So uh, everyone who is working at height, he should be wearing this harness. There we have lifeline over there on the roof. So at that time, he should be wearing and 100% tie off should be observed at that time that he should be attaching his harness with that lifeline throughout his working on the roof. So about this, this is our access tower and uh, the signages are uh, regarding the personal protective equipment which, uh, which are the mandatory and the basic protective equipments which uh, they need to wear while climbing on the roof and going on the roof and uh, no smoking definitely this is uh, some uh, we have uh, severe fire hazards and uh, uh, like oil and gas hazards over here so that's why smoking is strictly prohibited on, uh, on this side and uh, the third thing is which we you all already asked me about the safety harness which everyone has to follow and comply with while going on the roof and how we we'll, uh, make sure that this access is safe is this green tag this okay. green tag over here this can tell us that this uh, uh, scaffolding is safe to use okay so if this is not there and if this is not inspection may i show you the inspection tag also is this periodically uh, checked? Yeah, weekly. This is, there is a weekly inspection for this uh, uh, inspection tag. Every week, the scaffolding inspector comes and he uh, uh, inspects the scaffolding, and then he will sign here and put it there back. So if this is like this, in yellow, in yellow color, this means that this is either it's not safe to use or it is under construction. So there is one more thing: if there is no tag at all. Let but me tell you. This is basically saying that the currently yeah. it's under construction. So if the yellow tag is yeah. displayed, yeah. it means ah because it's a green. Okay, yeah. got it. So if this is green, then okay. it is good to go. Okay. So if there is no tag at all, there ah. will be a red tag displaying over here. This scaffolding is uh, not to use, not safe to use, and uh, extremely dangerous if somebody is going to use this. Got it. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Hussein, um, can you tell me a little bit more about the specific 
uh, COVID-19 HSE rules that you have implemented here? Yeah, here we are like uh, what we are doing every day, whoever is coming uh, to the site, we are taking his temperature measures and then we are uh, noting this uh, uh, this temperature on the daily safety task instruction which, which we are delivering every day to the, uh, to the workers. Also what we are doing, we are uh, uh, asking verbally to people if they are feeling good, if they are uh, uh, like feeling okay to work on site, if not and if the temperature is fluctuate or uh, more than the, uh, uh, the standard mm -hmm. then uh, we, uh, we ask them to go out and uh, get the test for, uh, for themselves and also the people who have been in contact with them. Another thing which is uh, regarding the transportation, so maximum three people are allowed at the time uh, in one car or the buses for the, they are running at 30% of their capacity. So these are some additional precautions like I, I have already mentioned, we are uh, uh, distancing people with uh, uh, like they are uh, using their water bottles while uh, working on roof. So they are, ha they are having their separate water bottles. No one is allowed to use any other one's uh, water bottle. And the other thing, the, uh, the surgical mask they have to wear all the time. No one is uh, allowed to even lower uh, even a millimeter of it. So no one is allowed to do that. They have to replace this uh, twice a day. So uh, this is our standard, which uh, we are following over here. And uh, this Great. is how we are going to deal with COVID-19 situation. Right? Great, thanks Josefa. Um, I will now probably go with Naeem, who is the director of implementation uh, on, on the scaffolding up, up there and uh, have a look at the roof. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you, my players. Thank you. We are now up here on the roof. Actually, I'm still standing on the scaffolding. Naeem, who is joining me here now, he's already standing on the roof. That's why he has special protection. Uh, Naeem, maybe if you first uh, introduce yourself briefly. Yeah, it's me, Naeem Odi. I am the director of implementation at NRWARE. I am following the construction for all EBC projects in UAE and uh, the region. Great. Um, Naeem, uh, Hussefa has already uh, elaborated quite a lot about uh, the COVID-19 related HSE rules and regulations that you're taking. Um, can you talk a little bit about, for example, what HSE considerations you're taking in the design phase of a project? Yeah, actually, from the beginning, from the first site, site survey we do for uh, each and every project, we consider the main uh, important points, which are the uh, lifelines, a uh, uh, skylight covers, if there is a skylights, and uh, walkways. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, uh, as it's known for solar systems, this base is very important, but technically we have no issues to lose uh, 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 capacity of the system, but to keep uh, space to consider the, all the safety measures, because for us, safety first and safety always and first before everything. Great. I mean, that's also part of the culture, I guess, and, and that's also part of what Hussefa indicated. Um, the, the culture of Enaware. Enaware is also investing a lot of training on people. Can you talk briefly on that? Yes, sure. First of all, about Enaware, actually, we are so proud to have zero LTI records for all of our projects done in the region. Uh, for We are talking about tens of megawatt projects. Although we have these records, we always make it clearly for our team that because you don't have accidents or accidents never happen to you, that doesn't mean you will never have accident. So we are so proud of this, but we have to keep taking all the safety measures. And for our team, actually, we have three types of people at sites and projects. We have project managers, project engineers, and we have safety officers. So we make sure that all of them are trained, all of them are certified, and all of them actually are in charge in, in direct or indirect, indirectly for uh, following the safety measures to instruct everyone at site to follow all the standards, requirements, measures, and so on. Fantastic, great. Um, I see here, uh, which I haven't seen on other projects yet, uh, you have a time-lapse camera. Uh, is, is that also related to HSE? Yes, sure. Actually, for the, for the main reason actually for installing the camera is this COVID-19 issues because not everyone can come and visit the sites. Uh, so what we do actually, we give access to all project stakeholders. So they keep monitoring, making sure that all safety measures are applied at the project. Amazing. Uh, so this is basically to enforce compliance. This is great. Yes. Great. Um, 
sorry, just to come back briefly to COVID-19, um, what are you doing beyond the face masks, the gloves, the, the hand sanitizers to ensure social distancing and not spreading uh, of the virus? Yeah, actually, in addition to all of this stuff, uh, it is known actually in, in usual or normal uh, conditions for the construction, we start from point A and finish at point Z. But uh, what uh, we are doing now, actually, we change the whole strategy. We are splitting the team into different groups to make sure that we are applying the social distances. So we are doing implementation in, in different areas at the same time. And in addition to that, we are considering all the required safety stuff like lifeline. We installed lifeline everywhere. We installed like for this project, we installed permanent mm -hmm. skylight covers to make sure that all the area is safe and the groups can work freely and they are away from each other. Yeah. Great. And uh, you also have special areas for delivery, right? And when there are deliveries, you treat the deliveries, there are also certain protocols that HSE needs to follow on the delivery, that they are in special zones, etc., etc. Right? Yes, actually, all of these are considered. We have special zones or areas for this. We have clear standards. We share it with our logistic companies even before they bring the staff to site. And we'll have our safety officer with the safety engineer and supervisor to make sure that all of these standards and rules are 100% followed. Great, thanks, man. Um, so beyond all of these rules and regulations, if you take it sort of up a level on a managerial level, what are sort of key tools that you're using to enforce HSE rules? Actually, for this, we have the, our standard reporting. There is daily reporting, weekly reporting, monthly reporting. We have a clear official communication with all project stakeholders. And we have this called formal communication. But in addition to all of this, for safety, there is informal communication, which means it is allowed for whoever with at any position, even if he is just foreman or project engineer or project manager to escalate any issue related to safety to anyone, to any position. And anyone for the project, he has the authority to stop the work at any time if he noticed any violation at site. Great, great. And I think it, it's also worth mentioning, uh, obviously, we, we need to comply with uh, rules on HSE, the, the laws, but frequently the standards of our clients because they are also in industries that have extremely high HSE standards. So we have clients that are from the oil and gas sector, right? They have extremely high HSE standards that go sometimes or frequently beyond the standards of the legal requirements. These need to be adhered to. And for that, uh, what you've mentioned, this communication between stakeholders is critical, frequent meetings, the right communication channels, etc. Yes, actually, we, we do start the coordination for, for safety, even for some projects, even before we sign the contract for the project. We start all the coordination, we prepare the risk assessment. We see if there is any specific or necessary training that our guys need to be trained and certified. We do so. For some projects, actually, we hire a third party to make sure that we are following some specific requirements for some projects. Excellent. Yes. Great. Thank you so much, Naeem. Uh, make sure that everyone stays safe. Um, and I'll see you sometime in the office. Yeah, or on the thank side. you and uh, stay safe. Thank you. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and uh, click the like button.